Hello everyone. I am so grateful to be here today addressing you all virtually at this very pivotal moment in our society's history. My name is Kylie Porter and I am the Executive Director of the Global Compact Network Australia, also known as GCNA. We are the Australian local network of the United Nations Global Compact, the world's largest corporate sustainability initiative. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge that this meeting is being held on the traditional owners of the lands of lands. For me, that's the Rwandari people of the Kulin Nation, and I pay my respects to elders, past, present and future. I hope that I speak for many Australians that the COVID-19 restrictions have given us a sense of country and a sense of place. For Indigenous Australians, country has always meant something beyond the dictionary definition of the word. It means homeland, tribal, clan area, and a word that encapsulates all of the feelings that we have about a place, its values, the place itself, the resources, and the cultural obligations associated with that area. For Indigenous people, that includes also includes, I should say, all of their ancestral domains. As a mother and a business leader, I certainly acknowledge the role that we must play in teaching our children about Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, about their values, about the notion of country and the long-term effects that colonialism has had on their livelihoods, as we all have a lot to learn from them as part of our own sustainability journey. So today I ask you to consider your connection to place because this is fundamental to ensuring a sustainable future. Now, more than ever, businesses, no matter what size, have the responsibility to take action and deliver against global targets to ensure sustainability of our society, economies and planet. Doing so will ensure the resilience of local economies. It will provide local job security and also improve our local export abilities. And I acknowledge that sustainability can sometimes feel like an incredibly complex ideology. And to be honest, it is. But put simply, it means meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Today, one of the biggest threats to our future generations is global warming. There is no denying the fact that climate change is a business risk. The consequences of climate change globally are far reaching from heat waves, floods, infectious diseases and pandemics, cyclones growing in frequency and severity and catastrophic outcomes, such as drought, rising sea levels, climate refugees and far greater social inequalities. A few months ago, many of you will have seen that the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change, also known as the IPCC, released its sixth assessment report. The report was alarming and shocked many of us to the core. It was described as a code red for humanity. It showed that global temperatures are expected to reach or exceed 1.5 degree warming when averaged over the next 20 years. It showed that currently the world has already warmed by 1.1 degrees since 1850 to 1900. It showed that Australia has felt the effects of climate change the most as we have in fact warmed by 1.4 degrees by since 1910. It showed us that the past five years have been the hottest years in record since 1850. And it also showed us that the recent rate of sea rise, in sea level rises, sorry, has nearly tripled compared to between 1901 and 1971. Without a doubt, the report states that global warming is unequivocally caused by human activities. The flow on effect of global warming and climate change means that we must also be hyper aware of the ever increasing gap between rich and poor, which leads to many other issues, including increases in modern slavery, poverty, inequality, and less natural resources. And then we have to look at other problems like overpopulation, which is demanding more on energy, food, water, and goods across the world. At this rate, we require 1.7 planets to provide the resources that we need. And by 2030, if we keep going down this route, we'll need the equivalent of two Earths to support life. This clearly is not sustainable. It does not allow future generations to meet their needs. We can no longer hide from the fact that these risks will impact how businesses operate. 
from the bottom line to employee safety, to supply chains and logistics. Further, it will affect how employees and customers engage with business, especially as they become more conscious consumers. We know that the pandemic and the associated economic crisis have strengthened the case for businesses to implement environmental and social governance or ESG into their business strategies and operations. It has demonstrated that ESG activities are fundamental to a successful business. In fact, according to the IMF or the International Monetary Fund, to ensure strong economic recovery from the pandemic, we will need over US dollars 20 trillion in investment over the next 10 years to reduce the impacts of climate change and progress towards the sustainable development goals that are known as the SDGs. The viability of our economy depends on protecting livelihoods. We still, however, and very pleasingly, have time to act. We strongly believe that businesses will lead the way in ensuring a climate healthy future. Local businesses have the power to change the narrative as the fuel for Australian economies, for the Australian economy, I should say. Your actions and commitment is critical to influencing change. This means that businesses must commit to emissions reductions targets well below 1.5 degrees. And they do this by setting short, medium and long-term commitments. Further, businesses must innovate their business models with circularity in mind, embrace technology and set a vision for a sustainable future. At the heart of addressing sustainability is innovation. The need to approach all business problems with a human mentality and with unwavering leadership from business leaders who wholeheartedly believe in a prosperous future. We are seeing countries across the world do it. And there is no question in my mind that Australian companies can do this too and become real leaders in sustainable business practices. The pandemic has provided us with an opportunity to rebuild the world into one that we are proud of and one that we are happy to leave for future generations. The SDGs are key to ensuring that our future is inclusive, diverse and sustainable, which with each goal having clear targets and indicators. Businesses can also use these as a benchmark for success. So as global forces unite at the Conference of Parties 26 or COP26 right at this moment in Glasgow, all of us here today have a critical role to ensure that Australia is positioned as a global leader by in innovation, by delivering credible strategies and actions that align to a 1.5 degree science-based target. To conclude, let me leave you with this. This is the decade to deliver. It is a time to ensure that we treat our land, place and people with respect. As UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said in response to the IPCC report, if we combine forces now, we can avert climate catastrophe. catastrophe sorry. But as today's report makes clear, there is no time for delay and there is no room for excuses. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your time today and I look forward to hearing the outcomes of your sessions. Thank you.